Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Two wide receivers will be looking to be number one targets on the field in today's game. It's Jones's Falcons going up against Benjamin's Panthers. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, with a beautiful skyline towering just to the right of us, you get a look inside Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. A short time ago, a scene that never fails to stir up the folks here in Charlotte. Cam Newton strutting his way onto the field. His guys are fired up as they get set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Atlanta Falcons. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. The Panthers kicker, Graham Gano, set and ready to go as we are off from Charlotte. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Well, we shall see if Matt Ryan and the Falcons offense can get things going. They lost last week at New England, so the expectations coming into this year were giant. Matt Ryan, such a great season, obviously, last year. What's going on there? That's one of the great questions that Atlanta's trying to figure out because I don't know of any you know, glaring injuries that are affecting what they're doing. They have their running backs. Julio Jones is out there playing. Matt Ryan's there. Offensive line relatively intact. Hard to believe they're currently in third place in the NFC South. I thought that they would be setting the pace. Many people are saying, was 2016 an aberration for Matt Ryan when he was the NFL MVP? I thought it was just a better year than normal for him. He's been very consistent in his career. They've got to figure out how to get back on track and get back to making explosive plays. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. That one goes for 24 yards. That's a matchup. Maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, you know, he'd say, follow it away, lad. Follow it away because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad and... Now a play fake here on first down. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. The Pro Bowl wideout Julio Jones is intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Before Atlanta takes another snap on offense, you know, we get a stat pack before each game, and one that really jumped out. Atlanta had gone over 90 minutes of game time without a touchdown, and then they finally got one with Julio Jones in that New England loss. Was yours in neon? It was in bold neon. <laughs> there mean, were flashing signs. It was unbelievable. <laughs> over 90 minutes, the Atlanta Falcons. That off. Offense. So no explosive. Points. The NFL MVP at quarterback, maybe the best receiver in the game out wide, Julio Jones. No. Yeah, that, that stunned me as well. Talk about a team that has questions right now. They're searching for answers. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. And now a first down following that long gain. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Three. 
So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Freeman again, a first down carry. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and it'll bring up a second and 13. Luke Keekley combines speed, intelligence, toughness, puts it all together. It makes plays like one we just saw there. He may not be a big time blitzer, but boy, he knows how to pursue straight ahead and make plays in the run game. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And his throw is going to be incomplete. the starting crew defensively for Carolina. When I saw that the Carolina Panthers were ranked 21st in total defense in 2016, I thought it was a misprint. This is a very talented defense, but they didn't play up to those standards in 2016. Perhaps the loss of Josh Norman at corner hurt them in the secondary. Luke Keekley, their middle linebacker and their heart and soul of their defense, wasn't able to play a complete season, and they didn't get the same pass rush in 2016 that they had in the previous year when they went to the Super Bowl. Third and long, it's Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, they took the shot, didn't get it. There's definitely a difference here because they had a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding him to three. Psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryant. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. So they come into enemy territory. Nice drive to start the game, but they probably wanted six. They only got three. I agree with you totally. That's the expectation. When you get the ball and you start moving it and you're rolling, you think you're going to end up in the end zone. But they should be happy with the three. A good way to get things going here in this game. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Mr. Cam Newton brings out the Carolina Panthers and this offense hoping to fare better than they did against Chicago last week. It was a rough day for Cam. Sacked five times, two interceptions. They only scored three points. They never got in sync. I mean, and they've really struggled because remember, their all-pro center, Ryan Khalil, has missed most of the season. He started this game against Chicago, got hurt again and went out of the lineup. And that really hurts their offense in terms of pulling everything together. But Cam Newton missed a lot of preseason. Still not totally in sync with the rest of his offense. They'll run. This is Jonathan Stewart. A very good move, but for a short gain out near the 32. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Kelvin Benjamin has to be a feature of this offense that's on your screen now. Definitely a number one receiver, a huge target with some speed. It's almost like go-go gadget when he goes up to get the football. No matter how you defend him, he can go just a little bit higher. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Out of the gun, Newton. On the catch, this is Russell Shepard. And a nice gain of 21 yards.
So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now Stewart on first down. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And here now, the defensive starters for Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons defense of 2016 was ranked 25th, but don't get caught up in the numbers. The last eight or nine games of the season, things really started to click for head coach Dan Quinn, who really ran that defense based on what he had run in Seattle. And it really is predicated on speed, speed, speed. Every level of the defense. And Vic Beasley, their outside linebacker in his second season, had 15 and a half sacks and six forced fumbles, both which led the league. To throw on second down is Newton. To Shepard, complete over the middle. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. That goes for a gain of 31. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Ten more there and another first down. By the way, partner, that was a 30-year-old running back here in the ball. Yeah, it turned 30 back in March, did Stewart. Yeah, I know that people say that you're not supposed to at the age of 30, but Jonathan Stewart, good style, good physicality. He'll continue to run it. Hoping to keep him healthy. Hasn't played a full 16 games since 2011. Try to run with McCaffrey. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Not a whole lot there after the penalty, but remember, it was first and five, not first and ten. So now they can keep grinding out first downs, and good things can happen for them. Just second and short coming up. Offense working with a second and goal now from the three. This is McCaffrey. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Third and goal, option right. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. We always talk about how important speed is in the game of football. Deion Jones may be an undersized middle linebacker, but his speed allows him to get to just about anywhere on the field to make a play. And between he and Keanu Neal, the Falcons took the top two spots in the NFL in terms of rookie tacklers a season ago. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. On fourth down, Anderson. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. Well, I see what they were trying to do there. You pop up your holder, roll them out. You got the option to run or pass. This didn't work. Not at all. The communication was excellent defensively to make sure that receivers were covered as they escaped from the line of scrimmage because that's supposed to be a surprise to everyone, and that's how they get free. People forget their assignments on defense. That didn't happen. And think about the guy rolling out with the football, looking for an open person. No one there. Helpless feeling. Helpless because that gap between you and defenders now is going to close and close quickly.
The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Again, they'll run with Freeman. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Eight yards to go here on second down. Now Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And the Panthers bring in their nickel set as they try to defend here on third down. Five defensive backs. To throw is Ryan. And he's got Sanu. Ryan to Sanu. Good for an Atlanta first down. down pass incomplete he was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time and that'll bring up second down had an open man that time but ended up putting a little too much heat on it don't you think partner absolutely just needed a touch more air under it instead he fired an absolute bullet unable to connect on the first down pass play now it's second down The play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A good pick up there, a 22. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. This is Freeman on first and ten. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. Freeman again. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. In the red zone this time. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. He hits his target. It's the tight end, Toilolo. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. 
Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 3 nothing is our score. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Back to the ground, this time with Freeman. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you've got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. on the field to block, you might want to stop him. Look, I've got a very simple rule. An unblocked defender is usually your best defender, and he ended up making the play there. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Austin Hooper from three yards out. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. So that drive spans 13 plays, and the Falcons score to cap it off. Here's Bosher to kick it away. 
That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. Start the drive with a run by Stewart. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second down, here's Newton. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. and 10, Newton. And some room to work. Room to run past midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. here back at the 47 it's a loss of a yard there and now second down we just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game really at the point of attack the offensive line is just getting pushed around i think now as a play caller you've got to give them a little bit of help maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking but you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now Second down, McCaffrey looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Back-to-back -back stops, make it third and ten. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Throwing on third down, Newton. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Now a man who subbed in for Andy Lee down the stretch last year, Michael Pilardi, to kick it away. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line.
They go play action here on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, Charles, peeking back at week seven of the NFL season, has always had some top performances. You and I were discussing Zeke Elliott off air, three touchdowns, 147 yards rushing. Uh, who else did you like? Oh, I liked Eddie Jackson in Chicago, the rookie free safety out of Alabama. Two defensive touchdowns, over 75 yards each. That's an NFL record. I'm sorry, Ms. Jackson. Eddie's for real. <laughs> and then Amari Cooper over 200 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, he finally broke out. All we were talking about heading into that game was what's going on with Amari Cooper? Is he being targeted enough? Is he catching the ball enough? What's going on? Well, he broke out in a big way and announced his presence with authority once again. Julio back-to-back all-pro seasons. Last year, over 1,400 yards. Averaged over 100 yards per game. Tops in the NFL. And that's the stat that catches my eye. Over 100 yards per game. And you always hear about defenses saying, we can rotate, we can send people in this direction, we can do things to limit a wide receiver. Yet Julio Jones averages over 100 per game. One of the most sensational stats I've seen in recent football. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And he'll get this across the 40 and up to about the 42-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And now a 10th carry for Freeman. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. That man has still got it. Thomas Davis can do it all. Drop in the coverage, rush the quarterback, and, of course, make plenty of tackles. Closing in on 1,000 career tackles and consistent. Last year, 106 tackles. The year before, 105. College safety turned linebacker in the NFL. What a career. Here's Ryan. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Jones. A phrase we said a lot last year, Ryan to Jones for a Falcon first down. Well, sometimes it doesn't appear like much. The out route can be very dangerous when you throw it to a guy like Julio Jones. If you try and undercut it, he can turn into a big play. The reason he's able to get it so often is because of his ability to push people deep, and they have to respect that. Midfield now. Here's Ryan. Sanu with a grab over the middle. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does. And the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. On second down, Freeman. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. He came out ready to play. That's three tackles for a loss, Charles, only in the second quarter. And that's problematic for the guys trying to run offense because that means he's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and is actually beating them to the point of attack and making those plays. You might have to think about some misdirection or something to try and get him away from the ball. The Falcons on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Ryan. Looking deep for Julio. This is caught inside the 15. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. Yeah, 
Here's Ryan to throw. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Second down, Ryan. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Levine Toilolo, a five-yard touchdown. And the Falcons will extend their lead. That's almost just not right. You cover everybody, but those tight ends, they can be awfully reliable. Very reliable. It, the defense just has to hate those guys. This drives them crazy because oftentimes you can't match up with them. They have you either with size, speed, or maybe even just strength. Here's Bryant for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. A 10-play drive that time. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And he'll take it out to the 25. Carolina getting set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. down it's Newton it's complete right side to Benjamin and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line 17 yards on the pick up there the drive will continue it's a first down quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage off to Stewart. They find some open field here. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Well, after those plays, the offense coordinator has to feel like he has balance in his favor. Threw it, then ran it, both for nice chunks of yardage. Now he feels like he's got things going in his direction, but the defensive coordinator, his guys are off balance a little bit. How does he set up, and what does he plan for in the next play? Is there a tendency there he can lock in on and maybe set his defensive call? They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Shepard. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. 
Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. set of downs here. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. Back now as I search for my cue card here. There we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play. Well read. Yeah, thank you. Now Newton on first down. His throw caught at about the five. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. And Dixon. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Panthers, they're able to draw a bit closer. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Graham Gano on for the extra point. And it's 17-7. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Gano out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. to Freeman. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. and 10. It's Ryan. Over the middle complete. That's Jones. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Julio Jones is off to a monster first half, but still, can he reach what he did against the Panthers in 2016? <laughs> Didn't he go for a cool 300 in that game? On the dot in week four, 300 yards. Oh, Matt Ryan had a pretty good game, too. Threw for over 500. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Jones. 
And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A gain of 32 that time. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. The Falcons averaged 34 points a game last year. Tops in the NFL with that powerful offense. And they're already looking for more here as they've got it first and 10. To throw again is Ryan. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. Second and ten now, Ryan. And he'll be grabbed from behind and slung down like a rag doll. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And he's going to go down again. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryant. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It will be a 51-yard attempt. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And that will open the lead up now to 20-7. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Getting set to go again here. Cam Newton marches back onto the field. But a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way. And they won't settle for anything less so right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field. 
try to make sure his teammates come along with him. And he feels like if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, the little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. On first down, Newton. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. First down. Room here to run. Room to run inside the 40. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over, and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hash. And this will not have the distance to get there. Short, no good, just under the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Freeman here to begin the drive. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Line up at the three. Hooper is wide open, able to make the grab. And after the short pass, he'll score, which takes the lead to 10. Falcons have it on second and five. Ryan's going to find his mark, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. Falcons now up by 17. Now first and 10. Dixon's got nobody around him on the catch, and it leads to a touchdown. Panthers trail now by 10. First and 10, Newton's going to find his mark, and he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to their own 47-yard line. 
Panthers would not capitalize, though, missing the field goal. That'll do it from here in Orlando. Let's get you up to North Carolina for the second half with Brandon and Charles. Gents. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22 yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never wanted to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see okay. if that script is a good one for them. They start the third quarter on the ground with Stewart. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now a play fake here on first down. And his throw is incomplete. The tight end, Ed Dixon, was the target. And it's second down. The partner, I'm going to go off topic for a second here. Discussion we were having in the truck before the game about guys in the NFL this year, superstars that have had slow starts that maybe you're thinking, okay, they need to have a better second half of the season. Yeah, and I think that some of them will. Amari Cooper comes to mind. Really rough beginning to this season, but he broke out against Kansas City in the Thursday night game, so I think that will continue. Ben Roethlisberger, we're just a couple weeks removed from him thinking, I'm not sure I have it anymore. Oh, yeah, he still has it. They've won two games since then. Des Bryant, he went off against San Francisco. Maybe San Francisco's the tonic that he needed to get him going. Jay Ajayi and Miami are winning. But how about Julio Jones and Matt Ryan? The struggles continue in Atlanta, trying to figure out how to get back to last year's explosiveness. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. From the gun, here's Newton. Completes it to Dixon. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. First down throw for Newton. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll make it a second down. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Second down now after the pass completion. Set. 
Now Cam, option left. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's going to get this inside the 30. So not his arm, but hurting him with his legs. A gain of 19 on the keeper and a first down. In this case, I would love to be an offensive coordinator and draw up designed runs for Cam Newton. Absolutely. And he, he can obviously throw it. He can pass. I mean, heck, 2015, first quarterback in NFL history. Over 30 touchdown passes and over 10 touchdown runs. He can do it all. He's the ultimate weapon, isn't he? Newton turns and hands to Stewart. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. How about the defense not hanging their heads from the previous play where they were beat for a big run, came back on the very next down, and made a play defensively that was to their credit. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Now a 10th carry for Jonathan Stewart. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Panthers on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. A shotgun snap for Newton. And Dixon over the middle. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. to Stewart and he'll be taken down at the two yard line a nice pickup of 14 and it moves the stick sets up a first and goal and the tackle's made there by one of the secondary members and I can guarantee you having played that spot in the huddle right now or on the field they're urging for a little bit more support from the guys up front I actually remember one game where I hopped over a defensive lineman to make a tackle downfield and realized he was 10 yards downfield. That's not good. That's being driven off the line of scrimmage, and you can't have that if you're going to win a game on defense. On first and goal, and he's going to bowl his way in for a Panther score. Cam Newton, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Panthers have got it back to a one-score game. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Gano now to add the extra point. And it's good. The deficit 6, 20 to 14. So that one a long 11-play drive. And Cam able to take it himself in for the score. Gano out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. 
And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again on offense, we get a peek at Julio Jones now. And I know that they double-teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. That's caught over the middle, Hooper. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. 23 yards on the play. Offense lining up first and ten. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And he fires one that's intercepted. It's the safety, Kirk Coleman. And he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. The good old cover three defense, partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, and break on the football when it's thrown and pick it off, just as we saw there. Carolina getting set to take the field. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. This is Stewart. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That good for 19 and a first down. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They go back to Stewart on first. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> Draw play, Newton to Stewart. And an alley to run. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. So they're operating in the red zone. Cam's going to run the option right, and he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Oh 
Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. They'll try the air now with Newton. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Brooks Reed able to get him for a loss of about three. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. So now Cam leads the Panthers up following the sack. Carolina facing third and long. Out of the gun, Newton. And the tight end, Dixon, left side. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And Gano's kick is right through. And that cuts the lead down to just three, 20 to 17. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time, and he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level, and he's able to get back on track. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And that's incomplete. Trying to get that in the hands of Devontae Freeman that time. And now it's second down. Now that incompletion gives us an opportunity to talk about what some people dubbed shutout Sunday this last week in the NFL. Well, we have three shutouts that yeah. we saw? Yeah, for the first time since 2012, matched the total number of shutouts all of last season. How about Denver getting shut out by the Chargers? That's the first shutout for the Broncos since 1992. 394 games worth. So that's a big deal. The Colts? Goose egg against Jacksonville. Jacksonville also put 10 sacks on them in that game. And the Cardinals went all the way to London. <laughs> Twickenham Stadium, in fact, to get shut out by their division rival, L.A. Rams. Defenses reign supreme. A good way there to have him bounce back from the interception last drive. Something underneath, a little bit of rhythm going. I know the best ones in the league have supreme confidence, but every now and then you need a little booster, don't you? This is their way of protecting him and bringing him back, and then they'll turn him loose later, I would think. On third down, that's Coleman. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. But well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain.
Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They go play action here on first down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it's a second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. And a short pickup here as he'll get across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The Panthers on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and five. Newton to throw. Grady Jarrett able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Now this is where field awareness comes into play. He's getting perilously close to his own goal line. And after that sack, backed up to his own two. Here's Michael Pilardi now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And it's fielded at the 34. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. they got to go thank the guys on D. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. to Freeman and he'll take this one down to the 36 two yards on the carry there it'll be second down 
offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Off the bootleg, Ryan. And his throw's going to be incomplete. The Falcons on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, Ryan. Finding Gabriel complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So the offense has it first and 10. A handoff, Devontae Freeman. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means it might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. The Falcons on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This is third and seven. Ryan. This is caught, and he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And in his 15th season, he's able to get this one to go. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. Bosher to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now the Panthers' offense, they get set to come back onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, 
move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. First down, it's Newton. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Grady Jarrett in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Second down is Newton. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be third and ten now. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. The Panthers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. From the gun, Newton. And incomplete here on third down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. This will be fielded at the 17. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe bash. laughs> I don't know about toe that. Bash, <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> On first down, Ryan. Here's Sanu on the catch. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Freeman, he's been busy today. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On second down, Ryan. Looking downfield for Jones. He's got it at the 15. A big play there, Ryan to Jones. 43 yards. I really don't think that Julio Jones could be happier right now. Plenty of catch opportunities in this game. He's converted them. 
and his team's winning. And Matt Ryan's happy, too, to have Julio Jones on the other side of these. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we talk about breaking teams down, and oftentimes it's through a running game. These two, they can break a team down through the air. They run. Devontae Freeman. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Captain Mutterland. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. Cam Newton getting ready to go again on offense. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. They were looking for a little spark and some breathing room. They got it right there, a gain of 14 and a first down. Forget height and catch radius. When you run the fade really well, run down the defender, kind of take him a little bit towards the middle of the field, and then fade to the sideline and give your quarterback some space, it can be executed that well, just as we saw. On first and 10, Newton. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. To throw again, Newton. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And down he'll go at the 25. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. But sometimes, Brandon, there's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there a big third down conversion. Now Newton on first down. And Kelvin Benjamin's got it. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Yeah. 
And of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. On second down, they run with Stewart. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And here comes play number six on this drive. down Newton and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down a couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime and because of that really not many places to throw the football if any and typically what would you want to do against that dime run the football you want to run the ball but you can't do it in this situation not nearly enough time on the clock you have to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you He'll look to throw. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. They'll look to throw. hit as he threw it there and it forces it incomplete this defense has watched their lead dwindle away this is where they really need to bow up they executed well there and it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again they just did it on the last play looks like they want to finish this one off Another run for Stewart. He's been busy. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Back to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Back to throw. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap, to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. He's back to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown. And they're an extra point away from taking the lead here in the final minute. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you've pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Who's calling up the defense to make sure they're focused because they still have some work to do? And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. <laughs>
Gano for the extra point. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. So that one a 13-play drive in total. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Gano out to kick this one away. On the return, here's Justin Hardy. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Matt Ryan and the offense heading back onto the field. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? It's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Now Ryan. So this is Gabriel on the catch. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Throwing now is Ryan. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. here a timeout before this third down play takes place as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock and welcome back the offensive unit they took the timeout and now they get set to line up as we resume action The Falcons on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and seven. Here's Ryan. That's complete. Hooper. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So 
So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryan. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryant. This to almost certainly win the football game. And this kick is not going to get there. It's short and no good. Well, befitting a tight game like this, it all came down to the wire. But in the end, the field goal to win, it goes begging. Oh, man, that is a tough way to lose a football game. You put yourself in position, and you give yourself a chance, but it was just not meant to be. And this one going to wrap up with Cam Newton going down to a knee. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Panthers are winners here as we say so long from Charlotte.